how's it going people welcome back to my channel i thought i'd bring you guys a video today because i haven't really rounded up all the bullshit transfer rumors going around in the past week so i'll do it all in this video and we'll hopefully get a bit more consistent with with all these rumors that circulate around arsenal football club and the players were so-called about to sign um and whatnot but listen i've done a live q a yesterday if you did participate in that and you got your questions through appreciate that if you didn't go and watch that now let me know give me some feedback and how it went and how you'd like to see it moving forward because ideally i'd like to get that done once a week um a live session but let me know how you lot would want me to approach it and um if you haven't you can see already there's one football sponsor in the video sponsor in the channel there's a link in the description box below make sure you go and download the app using that link below if you've done it already love people love if you're doing it right now love appreciate that as well um and obviously this sunday morning another nice morning world cup i was due to talk about coutinho first but lacazette seems to be the headlines at the moment and um the rumours are that with Aubameyang on the verge of signing this new deal, it looks like off the back of that, Lacazette might be headed out of the club to Atletico Madrid. Um, they seem to be the main club linked. They're also into Milan. I've heard Juventus, so I've read Juventus too. Um, taking it all with a pinch of salt, but at the same time, it does make sense. I, I did say towards the end of the season that we would probably have to let one go. I thought it would, it would be Oba, considering his contract was coming to an end, well, with a year left, and it didn't seem like he would sign. Talking to you guys now, it looks like he will sign, and if he does sign, then selling Lacazette, in my opinion, would be the right thing to do. But you guys also know me, I'm a big fan of Lacazette. It hasn't worked out at the club, I'll be honest about that. I just feel like it isn't the right fit or it hasn't been the right fit for him. When I look back at that January, we signed Aubameyang and sold Giroud. I feel like looking back now, if we had Giroud up top with Oba on one side and Pepe on the other. It looks a lot more balanced. Yeah, you can see what's coming with that attack. But with Lacquer up top or next to Oba across the years, across the last two, three years, it just hasn't hit the heights that we would have hoped it would hit. And a lot of people do talk about their partnership and... I don't really call it a partnership. Like Cole and York was a partnership. Bergkamp and Wright was a partnership. Bergkamp and Henri was a partnership. I don't see Lacan and Oba as a partnership. I see it as a friendship that fans are getting twisted with a partnership. On the pitch, they haven't really managed to transition that friendship, that how they seem to get along outside of football onto the football pitch and, and, and make it work creatively, adding product to it. it just it just hasn't worked there's been an imbalance in the side ever since the last few years of Wenger and it, it just hasn't been fixed and those six months where we signed Laka and Oba um, and re-signed Mesut Ozil it really did cost us up until this day with, with Ozil's contract running down with a year left at, at the very most we can finally turn a corner but at the same time we have to realise that this Oba and Laka friendship hasn't really been the best on the pitch for Arsenal Football Club. So it does make sense to me. Um, if we are to re-sign Oba, he's definitely going to be on improved wages. And at the moment, wages are a hindrance to the club. Finance, finances are a hindrance to the club, as always, to be honest. It doesn't seem like we've ever turned a corner in that department since we left Highbury. Um, but it is what it is there. In terms of that rumour, do I see it being realistic? Yes, I do. I do see... Arteta needing to make some tough decisions. Um, he talked about making tough decisions in press conferences towards the end of the season when he talked about Klopp and Liverpool and how they had they recovered or, or um, their resurgence over the last four years. He talked about big decisions that some people, some fans, some other players won't be happy with. That the Klopp had to make those decisions and. In the end, in the long run, it was very beneficial for the team, for the club, for the fan base, for everyone involved in Liverpool Football Club. And I feel like some of them big decisions that Arteta is going to have to make, it's not only the easy ones with Mustafi and David Luiz and Socrates and um, Xhaka and all. It's not the easy decisions because we know they need to be upgraded. L Ozil, we, we, we know this. That if you're a subscriber of my channel, you know this already. It's the big decisions like Bellerin. 
a fan favourite, Lacazette, a fan favourite. Those are the big decisions that he's going to need to to manage and come out the other side with proof that, listen, yes, that irked a few people at the time, but on the back end of it, look where we are now. Look how we are playing now. Look at the balance. Look at the approach. Look at the fluidity. And that's why I expect to see um, next season if we have a good transfer window. And that's a very, very big if, as, as you guys know. So yeah, that transfer rumour, in my opinion, does hold some weight. What I'm a bit nervous and curious about is what's happening with Oba's contract. Like, are we waiting to do some massive video? Are we waiting to release it in some big hoo-ha? Because in all honesty, yeah, just release the news and move on. Because like I said in the Q&A, if you watched it, I said, the Arsenal fan base is going to go up in arms when he signs a new contract. They're going to be so excited. They're going to love it. They're going to go mad on Twitter, um, forgetting the real issue, forgetting that we've had Oba banging for the last two years, banging on top form for the last two years, and we've done fuck all. Okay, we won the FA Cup, but in terms of where we want to get to, where we expect to get to, we've done fuck all. So yes, Oba signing is massive, it's massive, but just release the news, the fans, take it easy you know it's not the be all and end all this summer it's a very good start if you can say start with with community shield a few weeks away in the premier league what a month away basically but just take it easy because there's other areas of the squad that need fixing alba can't do it on his own and it's been proven in the last couple of years and yeah we will move on to coutinho now i think um constantly linked he was linked towards the end of the season the last few games um he's a player that was linked last season too i'm sure personal terms were agreed last season too i'm sh and how many times have you heard personal terms been agreed and the transfer never goes through like i've told you lot last season i'm gonna tell you lot again this summer i'm gonna tell you that this whole personal terms agreed shit don't believe it because you can't be agreeing personal terms with a player without even agreeing with the club what's going on like that's what clubs get done for you can't talk to players let alone agree personal terms before you agree something with the club what's that about yet somehow the media get away with sending across these messages and they, i guess they get away with it because the fans react the fans lose their minds you know we can't agree personal terms without agreeing things with the club yeah that's first and foremost about that rumor yeah, fuck that personal terms agreed. Shit, Zaha is probably the most recent example last season who agreed personal terms early on, was linked for the next seven, eight weeks of the transfer window and nothing happened at all. Nothing. So, uh, miss me with that personal term shit. Um, looking at Coutinho signing, I'm going to look at it in two ways. I'll start with the positive side. We lack creativity and goals from midfield and he does bring goals from midfield and he does add creativity he takes the attention away from players like Oba he takes the attention away from players like Pepe he will add something to the middle he will add something to the team no two ways about it he is head and shoulders above any other attacking midfielder we have head and shoulders so yes that will be a positive sign and in that aspect um, and I feel like if you can get it done at a reasonable fee or maybe a loan and then a reasonable fee um looking at how he performs next season obviously because it is a big season for him it didn't work out for him at Barca it didn't work out for him at Bayern uh hence why Arsenal's even a possibility and that brings me on to the negative side of things which is would he really sign for Arsenal Football Club if if he had choices I I, I genuinely doubt that um, hence why I'd probably prefer the loan to buy and see see how things fare next season but at the same time I do believe Arteta is the type of manager um, that can help revive a player's motivation Arteta does seem like someone who he's a good man manager um, even down to the Gwenduzis in an Ozil situation he, he's managed them in my opinion very well uh, obviously, people can say you don't like Ozil. You don't. Yeah, I don't like Ozil. But with Guendouzi, I do like Guendouzi. I do. He's gonna. He's gonna be a top top player. But at the same time, I can agree that Arteta's managed that situation well. 
and then you look at other players who he's managed to progress so far in the side and and I, even with the Martinelli situation I feel like look at Saka look how much we started expecting of Saka at such a young age he signed the contract he got a goal he got an assist and the fan base can go a bit wild but we have to also remember that he is very young Martinelli is very young and that's part of the reason I feel like Arteta did take him out of that starting lineup a bit more um, towards the last few games of the season because I feel like we can't rest all our hopes on Saka yes he's got the number seven shirt yes he's signed a new long-term deal yes he's Arsenal through and through yes I do want him to start consistently on the left next year going back to the Lacazette thing if, if we did sell Lacazette I'd want to start Oba up top regardless I'd want to start Saka on the left and I'd want to start Pepe on the right looking at this situation adding Coutinho to that mix you've got that front and four there Oba, Saka, Pepe, Coutinho you know, then you start to build behind. If you can manage to get Partey, Partey, solid there. Okay, you partner him with, it is what it is. You might have to partner him with a Xhaka. You might partner him with a Ceballos, depending on the match. But that is a certain sign in there in Thomas Partey. You know, and then your team starts looking a lot better through and through. You know, there's a lot more balance to the side. You know each individual job. You know what's happening. Obviously, when you go to the back four, it's a bit more sticky because I think Tin is the only 30, 30, 30 starter in, the, in that side. Yeah, we can argue Saliba because we haven't seen him yet and I wouldn't start any of the six centre-backs we have if I had a choice. Um, but Tierney is the one through and through left-back that or defensive player that I would be starting. But you do start seeing a lot more balance to the side if you do get Coutinho done. But at the same time, get the loan deal done. If there's any truth to these rumours, get the loan deal done. Um see how he fares, see his attitude, see if he's motivated, see if he really wants to be a part of this project and move on to next summer and decide whether you want to buy him or not. You know, we've got that decision to make. Well, it, it, it looked, it did, I can't even remember if Sabayas um, extended his or not, to be honest, but um, it's a similar one to that. You can see how it fares, see how it goes, judge the attitude and then decide on whether you want to buy him at the end of the season. But talent and quality-wise, no doubt, and when you compare him to William, which... We'll talk about next. If I had to pick out Coutinho and William, Coutinho all day long. All day long. The concerns I have for Coutinho, yeah, double, triple, quadruple with William. It's the same concerns quadrupled with less of the hope that he can add something to the side because, okay, William adds depth. Yeah, you can start William in that attacking mid position that I said Coutinho should start in, but at the end of the day, he's 32 today three-year contract he's moving on to 35 at the club it's that's nah that, that can't happen you two-year contract max even saying 100k max is too much in my opinion because he's going to be someone for depth you know 70 80k should do it for someone that 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 role in my opinion that's how much you spend on that role we can't be doing that with William it just doesn't make sense you look at his productivity over the years too. I think, what, 60 plus? Oh, to be honest, I need to check it again. But not, never 10 goals in a season. Um, again, if I talk about his, the player himself, I like William. I've liked William. He's been very... He mixes a lot of work, ethic and quality and talent across the pitch. He does everything without really ever excelling at anything. Would they, would they have taken him six, seven years ago? Definitely, no doubt about that. But not now. It just doesn't make sense. That there's a lot of Arsenal fans guessing the thing about, yeah, Willie and yeah, we'll take, we're not taking him. Chelsea just signed Ziyech. We need to try and get to Chelsea. They finished fourth. We need to try and get into that top four. We can't be signing the players that they don't mind letting go. If they really cared about letting William go, they would have offered him a three-year deal. Why wouldn't Chelsea offer him the same we're offering him? Because they're a bit smarter up there. And when I mean up there, I don't just mean up there. I mean up there in the boardroom too. Why wouldn't Chelsea offer what we're offering? Three years. For a player that's won it all with the club. Why? it doesn't make sense yeah Arsenal are going to come in and do that with the finances we have in the position we are we're just going to come in swoop hey William you want to stay in London yeah three more years yeah why not come stay we'll give you probably 100k too 120k yeah just come stay man Louise is here enjoy you two know each other you've won a lot of things together come and enjoy yeah talk your Brazilian 
enjoy enjoy life in London get your money off Arsenal Football Club and all of a sudden we're talking about a Brazilian core at this club like we're signing Neymar and fucking prime Dani Alves and Ronaldinho and all these man like, come on man give me a break give me a fucking break that's probably it for William to be honest because th what more can I say you don't know how I feel on that as a player I've rated him throughout his career I've rated him now I don't want him I do not want him it's another Welbeck it's another um, Silvestre it's another Louise it's another Czech yeah all of them players, yeah, were not wanted no more by their clubs. Hence why we could get them. Whereas look at the players that have gone to other clubs. Van Persie, Fabregas. Maybe not directly with Fabregas, but still. We turned them down for him to go Chelsea and win two league titles in five years. Let me not even... Um, to be honest... That was that's pretty much the solid rumors that have been circulating over the past week. Obviously, that Gabriel Ute from um, Lille centre back, he's been a solid rumor too. I don't know much about him. He does sound good, and a lot of top teams are interested. Um, he wasn't in the preseason squad yesterday for Lille's game. Obviously, their season's coming up quickly, so there's it seems like there's truth in that rumor too. It's just that. Again, like I said in the Q&A, you bring Saliba in and you bring this Gabriel you in, they're both youths. Let's be honest. Yeah? You, you, you can't pair them up in the Premier League in their first season. And I'm sure Arteta wants to do a 4-3-3. Three, three. Now, if he doesn't and he goes with the three at the back, you put Louise in the middle of those two. Louise, as experienced as he is, as accomplished as he is, we can see what he, he is capable of this year. The most penalties, the most red cards... A mess at times, quality at other times. Like you can't be coupling up two youngsters, expecting them to learn off this man when he's going to put them in more trouble than they've seen at their respective clubs. You know, the French league isn't like the, the, the Premier League. It isn't as um, fluidly attacking end to end as the Premier League is. So we need to bed these youngsters in properly otherwise their potential goes to waste and when their potential goes to waste you're lumped with a, a kid that you spent 30 mil on or 25 mil on who who in the end is going to cost you long term again i hope these decisions are the right ones gabriel from what i've seen after we've been linked which is just from research and whatnot from what i've read um he does look a prospect yeah, same way Saliba does too. But at the same time, a lot of prospects don't make it. And we need to give them the right platform. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I still think we need an experienced centre-back. But at the same time, what experienced centre-back is out there that we can attain right now? Probably no one. And the last name I wrote down is Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Um, he's been linked to a few clubs. Again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much I believe the rumours. I know he's. I know he wants to leave. I know he's probably going to leave. It does sound like these clubs are the level I'd expect him to go to, which is the West Ham's, the Fulham's. Even Tottenham's name came up in there somehow, but I don't believe that. I don't see how Mourinho or Tottenham would want to do such a thing unless they see some mad potential and, and think they can get him and turn him into a, a player that would regret going to the other side. But that's on them. If they want to try to do that, let them try to do that. Because in my opinion, the ceiling has been hit for Maitland-Niles. And in terms of stature, club stature and, 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 and all that, he ain't going to go up from here. With Fulham and West Ham, I see that as his level. No disrespect to Maitland-Niles. I just feel like he does a lot of good things in a lot of positions. He's a great utility player at times. But in terms of nailing a position down, in terms of making something his own in terms of honing skills because he's had adequate opportunity to do that at right back he's and he just hasn't done it you know he just hasn't done it and when i look at the team like if i look at maiden now i think we can get 10 15 mil for him i think we can get 15 20 mil for bellerin that's 30 35 mil between the two right backs you bring in max Aarons for 20 mil you make 15 mil profit you bring in max Aarons, who you start in right back you put cedric as the backup you've got a nice solid side there 
Okay, you got Tierney on the other side. Saka who can potentially play there, but I'd rather play him a bit up top. But you made 15 mil on one side and you can do your thing on the other. Potentially sell Kolasinac, maybe what, 15 mil, 20 mil? Yeah, you add that to the 15 you just saved, that's 30 mil. You go out there, potentially get another young left back to back up Tierney. Or get an experienced one to back up Tierney. You know, you sort that side out. What the fuck? You sort that side out. But then you can concentrate. You probably save 10 mil there again, maybe 5 mil. Let's say worst case, you spend the 30 mil. You still got your transfer kitty left for other positions, but you sorted out your left back, you sorted out your right back. You've got two players in each position, specialized in each position. You move on. Like this club don't do nothing, don't do nothing correctly, nothing correctly. And that's about it, really. That's about it for the rumor roundup. Um, as the rumors break now, I'll try to bring you lots some more consistent, more live videos and whatnot. Continue letting me know in the comments what you guys want to see. Liking, subscribing sharing add me on insta turkish ldn add me on twitter turkish ldn um continue liking doing all of that stuff i just said because the support is still mad i'm still getting messages to say bring out vids bring out vids bring out vids i'm still working it's summertime now i'm about to go out go to a barbecue chill out a bit with friends and family it is what it is man i'll try to bring you guys videos as much as i can my love for everything people love that.